Hey you guys, welcome to our Facebook Live and um, listen, I gotta tell you, it's amazing with what's going on in the world, it was very, very uh, thoughtful of Israel to, uh, to uh, stay in line with our schedule for today. Uh, we've had this Thursday set aside to do a quick Facebook Live because of the magnitude of what's going on in the world around us and uh, I've gotta go through some of the news to get to what's breaking news. And I don't know if you've heard about it, uh, but just before 3 a.m., uh, Israeli time, Israeli Air Force attacked Syria and uh, leveled a very key military research facility, listen carefully, in Syria that was being uh, fueled by, uh, used by, orchestrated uh, by the Iranians uh, regarding the manufacturing with, in, in concert with uh, Bashar Assad and Syria, chemical weapons and conventional type weapons to not only use against Israel, but this was the site that the chemicals were manufactured, if you remember not too long ago, that Assad was using this last spring against his own people. You may remember that that's when uh, President Trump responded and dropped uh, a series of bombs and ended that uh, that attack that Assad was carrying out against his own people. Now Israel in the night has uh, launched this attack. And this is an important attack, everybody, because number one, uh, it has killed uh, an undetermined, I wanna make this clear, right now Syria is saying only two people were killed, don't believe it. There were more people killed in this attack by the Israelis against this weapons manufacturing research facility than what's being reported on the Syrian or the Iranian side. Keep your ear on the news. You'll hear more as time goes by. But also this, Israel had key information that what was going on in that facility was destined to be delivered uh, to Hezbollah in the north of Israel uh, and to warriors and fighters in that part of the Golan to use against Israel. So this was a preemptive strike by Israel against Syria, but it's more complicated than that. It was 44 miles from a Russian air base in Syria. Uh, it, it included the killing of and the disabling of Iranian technology and support and engineers. This marriage of Russia, Persia, using Syria as a place to stage its future attacks. We know both from its planning, but more importantly from the Bible. Ezekiel chapter 38. Israel in a preemptive strike was moved. They had to do this because of what was going on there. But I wanted you guys to know that up front if you hadn't already heard. It's interesting that it comes on the 10th anniversary of Israel's previous attack against Syria to disable it against uh, it manufacturing weaponry that once again 10 years ago was going to be used against Israel and so here we have a little bit of repeat of history and that's that's an important thing for us to, to keep in mind everybody now back to the pressing moment at least for us here in the West and for those in the deep or far West and that is this escalation of North Korea do you remember in our last Facebook live together we talked about what could happen and uh, look, it's great, I'm not a prophet, none of us are prophets, okay, but we know the Bible and we know a little bit about history and what we said several weeks ago, I think it's been, what, a month ago, I'm not sure now, um, has proven to have been true. And that is that North Korea has escalated their development of not only their weapons delivery system, but now we hear that on uh, September 3rd, uh, they detonated a hydrogen bomb. Ladies and gentlemen, when you consider the damage that the United States did to Nagasaki and Hiroshima, that was an atomic bomb. And it was obviously the biggest bomb ever dropped uh, in history. This hydrogen bomb, do you understand this? The hydrogen bomb puts the atomic bomb to shame when it comes to brute power and scale. The hydrogen bomb is by far the worst. No one has ever used such a device that North Korea has detonated. In fact, now, right now, as I speak to you, China is monitoring the ecological disaster that the test has created. 
the wind patterns that are blowing from North Korea into China has got China now having deployed uh, devices to sniff out poison, fallout, air. China's now very upset. China's very concerned. And remember we told you before that why would Kim Jong-un do something like this? What has he got to gain by these kind of insane actions? He's alienated himself from the world. China's 90% of his economy. Why would he run the risk of upsetting his own food uh, chain provider, as it would be, his financial provider, China? Because what we said then is more true now, and it is the connection between Iran and North Korea. Their technology is made it together. Their uh, union is bolstering North Korea. Watch everyone. Just as we said two years ago, it is now more true today. All of our focus and attention is looking towards North Korea. The Seventh Fleet is in North Korea. Friends, listen, all Kim Jong-un has to do now is to launch the next missile. We don't know what's on the missiles. He could launch one more today. We could launch one more right now. It doesn't even have to strike a target. It can just be a, a nuclear warhead that can be detonated in the imminent or near atmospheric range. And a nuclear bomb detonated in the atmosphere becomes an EMP bomb. Kim Jong-un has the power right now to destabilize, if not obliterate or render the Seventh Fleet inoperable by launching an EMP bomb. Listen, if I was him, that's exactly what I would do right now. I would launch a short range nuclear device explosion in the atmosphere, downwind from North Korea, and it would cause enough consternation and care in the world, and it would do so much damage to the Seventh Fleet that that buys Kim Jong-un uh, time to uh, fulfill his dream. What's his dream? He's been announcing it. He's been saying it. He can now strike San Diego, Los Angeles, Seattle. In fact, I've got some data here. Um, I don't want to fumble around too much with these notes, but I'm looking at US News and World Report that North Korea in their uh, latest missile technology delivery system that they can deliver, listen to this, they can deliver uh, a nuclear warhead uh, 30 minutes to Los Angeles, 30 to 40 minutes, depending upon the trajectory, to New York and Washington, D.C. Seoul, Korea has zero to six minutes, depending upon the trajectory. Japan says, it says that Japan has somewhere under 10 minutes to prepare or less. And they've published, U.S. News and World Report, other agencies have produced this information. Hawaii is somewhere between eight and 10 minutes of survivability or preparation uh, should North Korea attack. This is now a real reality. This is not scare tactics. Somebody made a comment uh, the last time I did this and they said scaremongering. This person who said that it's an obvious uh, idiot, frankly, to not take these things seriously, that's funny. Listen, this is dead serious. Japan and its entire population is preparing to take shelter underground. Taiwan, Hawaii, South Korea. This is a big deal. And so uh, it's more true now than it was in our most recent uh, Facebook Live update that we did with you guys. Uh, keeping this in mind also, that uh, the connection has materialized even more so uh, between Iran now, North Korea. China is laying low in the sense that China could stop North Korea now, but they're not. That could change, but right now they haven't tried to stop North Korea. But lo and behold, what did we read? I read it less than a half hour ago in the Times of India, India News. India has discovered that Pakistan has been receiving from North Korea missile and nuclear technology to use against India. So we've got India, Russia in the mix, Iran, North Korea, South Korea, the United States. We've got all of Europe being concerned right now with what's happening regarding the escalation in the Middle East. 
We've got now ISIS. Listen to this. ISIS is being defeated as I speak. They're on the run. Hezbollah has provided buses to drive out and, and save ISIS warriors to safe zones. Listen to this. And then now as ISIS is leaving at Hezbollah's help, Hezbollah is taking ISIS territory. Russia is approving. Iran is approving. Iran and Russia using Hezbollah are moving right into the Middle East right now. And if that sounds like Ezekiel 38 getting staged and prepared, if that brings familiarity to your ears, you may be, we may be exactly correct. Russia's in the neighborhood of the Middle East, exactly as Ezekiel talked about. But listen, there's more going on. People have been asking me, what is the United States going to do? What's going to happen? What will be Trump's response to North Korea? Watch. Trump is looking to North Korea because we have commitments to defend South Korea and Japan and the region. America is distracted. I said this two years ago, and here we are now. America is distracted, looking to the deep Pacific West. Our resources are there. Congress have met on this issue. They're debating this issue. What's our plan? Should something happen? Okay, contingencies are being discussed. At the exact same time, as we talked about before, Iran now is stirring the pot. This thing with ISIS, instead of it being a victory, which, listen, Donald Trump, in his policies, since it was elected, don't know if you know this or not, said, well, you know, why is ISIS now on the run? Because Donald Trump decided to get politics out of the way and he turned our generals loose. Russia didn't defeat ISIS. Syria didn't defeat ISIS. Hezbollah didn't defeat them. Israel didn't defeat them. The United States military's got ISIS on the run, but it's backfired on us in a way, or maybe not. Maybe God's in control, amen, right? What has happened is that Israel's enemies under the covering of Russia has now moved right into the north of Israel. I would expect, I am planning on imminent war to break out against Israel anytime now. Anytime now, this September, October, November, December, anytime. Anytime. Why? Because America's looking west, America's resources are low, our military stretched. We've been fighting, what, in Afghanistan and Iraq, how long now? Uh, 15 years? Something like that? Okay, our military is, is um, they're tired. And so this is a great time. If you're an enemy of Israel and the enemy of America, the enemy of democracy, now's the time to attack. So I would keep my eyes looking to the Middle East. I still stand behind what I've said for the last two years. Should something happen in China or North Korea, keep your eyes on Iran. We know from the Bible, Iran is going to act up and Russia is going to be their protector. Okay, um, what else is going on? Okay, so, so here's, here's the question. What will the U.S. do? You may not be surprised for, of my assessment. I believe America will flex a big muscle. I believe you're going to hear elevated talk coming from both the White House and the Pentagon. I believe that uh, we'll do a lot of uh, war games type of things. We'll do a lot of flyovers or flybys. I personally do not believe that the United States will do anything against North Korea. I don't believe it. I don't believe that the United States government has the will to defend preemptively South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Guam, or Hawaii. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. I hope I'm wrong, but what am I what, what I'm expecting? That should North Korea trip that line, there's gonna be tens of thousands of people die either in Guam, South Korea, or Hawaii, or Taiwan before the US acts. 
I believe that the U.S. will act in some measure only after the good guys die. I don't see us acting. People are asking me literally from all over the world, Jack, what do you think Trump's going to do? I don't think it's just Trump. I, I think it's Trump, and I think it's our, our government will do nothing until there's dead people, a lot of dead people. And my friend, I want to be wrong about that. Keep your eyes to the Middle East. Israel is going to have to defend itself as it did today. And I expect things to break open there. Finally, this. We're going to be speaking on a very special Facebook Live event that's going to be hosted on September 20th, live at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time. And we are going to take an hour and a half. I know that's a long time, but I think you're going to get a lot out of it. The first 30 minutes, we're going to be discussing Bible doctrine, how it applies to interpreting events in the world. We need to stop the hysteria. This is ridiculous. People are talking about the eclipse that happened a week and a half ago, that America was going to split up into three pieces. God told them to say that earthquakes are going to happen all over in the shadow of the eclipse. That was insane, and God gets blamed for it not coming to pass. These are false prophets, okay? And then concerning September 23rd, all the hysteria that the world is going to end or the rapture is going to happen on September 23rd, hey, why wait? I hope the rapture happens today. But if you say the rapture is going to happen on September 23rd, now I know it's not going to happen on the 23rd. Jesus said nobody knows the day or the hour. This is crazy. Stop the hysteria. Calm down. Reel it in. So on September 20th, I'm going to host a special Facebook Live, 30 minutes of doctrine and how to interpret world events based upon the Bible, not based upon emotion. And then the next 30 minutes, we're going to be looking to see if there's any global events that relate to the Bible. And then the last 30 minutes, we're going to take questions from you all around the world. And if it's a success, we'll do it once a month until we choose not to do it. But we need some logic, some sense, and some reason regarding eschatology. 27% of the Bible is about the future. God doesn't give it to us to confuse us. He gives it to us that we might use it to be better prepared for these days. So, hey, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Share this. Let it go all over. Get it out there. But I hope this makes sense, and we'll see you next time. God bless you guys.